Welcome at Austin, Professor. I really enjoyed all the discussions and the forum you, you really actively use. And I think that's nice because we are a lot of people together from a lot of countries. And when we have these discussions, everybody can bring in his own ingredients, why we are doing things. So I really like to see this and I really enjoy these discussions on the, uh, on the forum and on the, online. Uh, when they look to EATMS, for example, it's really lively and also you see the positive things and the negative things and everybody has his own opinion. Great, why not? Share it and also we can see uh, how uh, people look against it with their own constraints. And maybe we can learn to see why we have this disbalance about the IDs and also we'll come back uh, with EATMS in the questions. So let's start. And the question was about, is there a future for rail? Yeah, you could say yes, uh, of course, uh, but maybe the, there is some doubt because we have this, uh, this COVID uh, problem uh, worldwide. So people are not so happy to go in the train fully packed and then do their travel. So they have some problems. They say, oh, wait a minute, I have to take some distance. And how to do that when we, I use public trains and, and yeah, uh, how to be safe, you could say. So I think this is may, maybe uh, not permanent way why we don't like to, uh, by traveling by trans, uh, public transport anymore i think it will come back and i think we have to go to the old situation maybe not that full packed but we have to go back in the train otherwise how can we uh, achieve the goals about the co2 uh, footprint we have to do we cannot just go on with uh, with the normal cars we have uh, also you could say traffic jams how to uh, get uh, this this problem away you can say, okay, we go for electric uh, uh, cars, we can go for automatic cars, but still it's a car and you need space on the same time and the same uh, period on the highway. So that's not a real solution. So people have to go and shift to another way to do their travel. And how? Yeah, that's the big question. Nobody can predict the future, but I still believe there's a big future when I look around in my con uh, network, there is a lot of uh, enthusiasm to invest in railways. So. I don't worry about it and I think especially here in Europe there will be a really long run to go for it and next year in Europe we have a new theme and that's the year of the rail so that's not just for fun we are really pushing to say please when you use and you like to use mobility and uh, to be mobile yourself please use the trains and, and go for it not only for passengers but also for freight so I think it's a bright future and we can go on with railways there was a question about signaling. Very good, I think, because the question was when the signaling is, fa is failing, and that's sometimes it happens, and then what? Yeah, very easy, I would say. Then you get a red signal because it must be safe. Anyhow, any case, it must be safe, so it is red. So we have to do something, some actions, to make it green again so you can drive. It's not nice for the passenger because, yeah, when there is a signal failure, mostly every operational uh, uh, actions are dead. You have to stop very safe but not convenient and how to change this to into a more appropriate a more robust system then when there is a failure you can easily check yes or no it is really an issue about safety or how to handle and that's i think mostly because of the human uh, human uh, part of it in the full process when you have capacity uh, and train uh, operators uh, they they have to steer the, the traffic you have also the maintenance is done by human people uh, when you could make this more automatically and by roboting uh, robots for example and uh, to get robotics inside this maintenance uh, for example then the human factor is low and you can more rely on this system and when you can rely on the system it's very easy that also the the dropouts or the failures will be lower but now a lot of uh, problems have to be solved by human beings and then it's depending on the skills or the, the knowledge of that kind of people or the system, uh, what he can change to solve the problem. And I think that's exactly what is changing now because now we have this digitalization that means we are more possible to do, use AI and other technologies to learn from our problems in the past. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. And I think that's really beneficial of this period. We are in this transition shifting from human uh, uh, factors and solving the problem just one by one and learning more or less nothing only to get senior etc and shifting translation to translation to uh, how to make this automatically and rely on the digitalization and ai so 
For me, I love this way of transition. You too? I hope we can do this together. Another discussion was about EATMS, I already said. And, and EATMS and ATO, what is really the case? Um, you can be, uh, uh, to say, okay, ATO is really important. EATMS has to be done, otherwise there is no <clears throat> way to find a way to make automatic train operations. I think it's not, not that easy to say, okay, it must be this, otherwise the other things cannot happen. For me, EATMS is just a tool. I think you have to have to implement this, otherwise we have no, uh, no change, no transition from the old school signaling into an automatic way of uh, organizing the, 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 the information and the signalings. So this transition you have to do, so EATMS for me is a tool. And why we have this tool? To go, as a, that's my final goal, for ATO. Then we have automatic trains, more capacity, uh, we can plan in more easily the maintenance, we can monitor, for example, the, all the, the assets very easily. And that's exactly what we need to go for the future. And how to do it and what is the best way to make smart infra or smart trains and what is the best I think it's, it's depending on what you are really willing to do, uh, what are your sacrifices you are willing to serve, and how much money you like to spend in a certain time of period. I think that's really the constraints, why you make a choice, and that's per country different, and you cannot say this is the, the one recipe and conquer the world. So what is your recipe? So please, uh, when you have an idea, uh, upload this and go on with the discussion. Another question was about smart infra or not. Good question, I think. As I already told about EATMS, it's always about the balance, what are the constraints. But you can have an, a story for both sides. You could say, okay, when I have a smart trains, I'm not depending on the, the infra, it's very cheap for the infra, just easy ride when it, is, it can, can uh, hold the trains and it can steer the trains, then it's more or less enough. Uh, but then you need smart trains and then that's also okay, but what about, for example, when you have an update by software and how to update all the trains are running in Europe, for example, just in one split of a second, so you really can rely that all the trains are, have the new software version and can go on with their operations. How to manage this? I think that's really an issue, how to do this. But okay, that's a challenge. On the other side, you could say, I like to invest in very smart infra. I put all the sensors in, I all the, 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 the steering, uh, and, and uh, the control units inside the infra, but mostly you have a long infra. So a lot of kilometers have to, to be done. And that's mostly costly, of course. How to manage that one? So, yeah, what is the best way? Yeah, I don't know. And it's really depending, what are you willing to do? What is your ambition? And I think when you have connectivity between countries, like we have in, in, in Europe, and you like to travel from Amsterdam to Paris or Madrid or whatever, without any problems, it would be very uh, easy to manage this when you have smart infra and more or less easy going trains without any, uh, not any, but with less equipment on board. So you don't have this, this uh, synchronizing uh, problems and get this, uh, this uh, software update. But okay, that's just an opinion. So you can go on with the discussion, but there's always a story behind. So keep that in mind. So that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed. I, I did. I also can refer on the cartoon of EATMS. It helps for me to have such uh, pictures or cartoons to make it maybe a little silly, but also it keeps you your uh, mental sharp and also focus why we are doing as we do. And that's exactly also the message. Always think about why we are doing as we do and not just accept, yeah, we do this already for 100 years, so, so be it. I think that's really a message to you and maybe you can help this to use the forum, use all the uh, other upload uh, stories or cases to uh, view, okay, why is what we do in our own country the right way and not what others are doing. So this helps a lot to understand each other's model just uh, and not saying, okay, we, what we do in our own country is the, is the best thing. There is more uh, uh, parameters, more ideas, more constraints that makes the story complete. So be aware of this. Keep uh, going and upload all your questions. We are happy to see what you are doing together. Good luck and keep on track.